Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel for Grade 12 Life Sciences. In this lesson today, we are going to talk about the human nervous system, guys. The nervous system is a system of the body that receives signals from internal and external environments of the body and gives reaction by responding to those signals. Here how it works. Stimulus here can refer to any environmental change taking place around that is noticed by your body. It may refer to pain received by the skin. It may refer to smell received by your nose. It also may refer to tasty food tasted by your tongue or any other signal of that nature. This stimulus now is detected by the receptors here and receptors are the organs which are receiving the stimuli and converting that into electrical impulse so that your body can recognize that. An example for that may be an object that you see which is received by your eyes in form of the light then converted into impulse by special photoreceptors found in your eye. Simply saying, the receptors are the organs that are converting stimuli into electrical impulse, guys. The stimuli which are detected by the receptors are now transmitted to central nervous system by a special neuron here that is called sensor neuron. Neurons are the functional units of the nervous system carrying the impulses all around the body. The CNS here is a part of nervous system which is consisting of brain and the spinal cord is then sending the impulses to effectors by the motor neurons here. And the effector here is referring to glands and muscles. So the response of the body is done by one of these glands or the muscles. Now, this structure that you see here is a typical nerve cell. These cells are making up the nervous system, guys. They are transmitting the impulses all around the body. Unlike all other cells, neurons may be quite long, reaching up to 1 or 2 meters long, guys. For instance, a neuron starting from the spinal cord of yours can reach to your toes. Let's now learn the parts of this cell here. We have a cell body here. Cell body is a main part of this structure here, of this neuron, guys, which is consisting of all organelles that are found in normal eukaryotic cells. It has a nucleus here, and all other components like mitochondria, Golgi body, and other organelles, guys. Then we have some branch-like parts here that are projecting from the cell body. These are called dendrites, guys. Dendrites are receiving signals or impulses from other neurons or the receptors and transmit that towards the cell body. Then the cell body takes that impulse and sends further to the next part of the neuron, which we call as axon, guys. Action is a long part of the neuron which again transmits impulse towards end of it and the further to the next neuron or the effector. And this is gonna be the end plate of the axon, guys. So the direction of the electrical impulse will be from the dendrites to the axons, guys. Now regarding these axons, guys, we have two types of axons found in our body, guys. They are myelinated axons, the axons with myelin sheath covered, guys, and non-myelinated axons. This structure here, which is given in a yellow color here, will be myelin sheath, guys. And the function of this myelin sheath is that it insulates the axon, thus allowing electrical impulse to transmit quickly and efficiently along the nerve cells. It is made up of Schwann cells that you can see here. This is gonna be a nucleus of the Schwann cell. What else we have here? We have the gaps here between the internodes of the myelin sheath and they are called 
nodes of Ranvia, guys. These gaps are important to speed up the propagation of the action potential along the axon with involvement of sodium ions. So the conduction velocity is increased between the nodes by these gaps again here. As you see here, this is a structure of myelin sheaths and is formed by the concentric wrapping of Schwann cells. This is going to be a nucleus of a Schwann cell, guys. Then we have nodes of Ranvia here, the gaps between the internodes of the myelin sheath and the axon, which is the middle part of this structure here. And this is going to be a myelin sheath, guys. Now, in terms of the functions they perform, there are three different types of neurons found in our body, guys, which are motor neuron here, and the sensory neurons here and the interneurons as you see here. Now what they do, motor neuron here is used for transmitting impulse from central nerve system towards effectors like muscles and glands. And they are also called as afferent neurons, guys. And the next one here, which is a sensory neuron, they are transmitting impulses from receptors to central nervous system, guys. And this is now called efferent neurons as well. Then the last one here is going to be interneuron, which serves as a connector between sensory neurons and the motor neurons. These are the neurons where the information is interpreted and processed. You will sometimes see them as relay neurons or connector neurons and the direction of the action potentials guys is going to be from the dendrites to the axons all the time guys now as these nerve cells differ from each other regarding the functions they do they also differ in terms of the structure they have as you see here if there are many outgrowths projected from the cell body like one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten this is gonna be multipolar neuron guys but in the second one here there's only one projection protruding from the cell body and then divides into two in this case this is gonna be unipolar neurons guys and the last one here, there are again many, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 extensions given rise by the cell body. This is also going to be a multipolar, guys. There are some other differences here, guys. Like interneuron here does not have myelin sheath. So this is going to be non-myelinated axon, guys. And keep in mind that myelinated axons will transmit impulses faster than the non-myelinated axons. Now, when the neurons interacting with each other, guys, they are not physically touching each other. There is a tiny gap which we call as a synapse. These gaps are very significant for impulse to be transmitted from one nerve to the another nerve cells, guys. So the neuron before the synaptic cleft or synaptic gap is going to be called as presynaptic nerve or sending cell at the time. And as you see here, the direction of the action potential again from the dendrites towards the axons. And the neuron after synapse will be postsynaptic cell or receiving cell. Here is a synaptic gap illustrated, guys. Now, this is going to be a synaptic cleft the tiny gap between two neurons guys this is going to be the terminal axon and part of the presynaptic cell and this is going to be the dendrite of the receiving neuron which is the dendrite of postsynaptic cell and there are neurotransmitters here the molecules that are transmitting impulse from one neuron to another and these neurotransmitters are stored in a synaptic vesicles guys and again, the direction of the action potential is the same as the arrow shown here, guys.
from the dendrites towards the axon. Now, the significance of synapse, guys, it ensures that the impulse travels in one direction only. So, there's not going to be any unidirectional flow in the neurons, guys. At the synapse, a neuron impulse can be either speeded up, slowed down, or blocked. By this, it enables unnecessary or unimportant background stimuli to be filtered out. I hope you understand everything here. This is all for today, guys. Please subscribe to my channel to learn the rest of the great 12 topics. And see you next lesson.